So we're starting the patio project today. We're transforming the garden to make it into a space we can use, hang out in. Now that the restrictions are easing, I would like to see some people and even that even if it's just in our garden you know I want to make sure that we've got a space to do so so I'm currently waiting for the deliveries to come through we've hired a skip we've got the materials for the patio and all we're doing is just we're extending the existing patio that Taylor Wimpy has put in for us because we're not too fussed about how or what this you know type of stone that we're using it's plain grey it does the job so um yeah, however, um, it's like midday and nothing's arrived. And to be honest, we weren't meant to start this job until tomorrow. But um, my dad and my brother who are doing the patio for us, um, they said that they're going to start today to get a head start. Otherwise, they'll be all over the weekend. And um, nobody's here. Nothing has been done. Nothing has arrived. So I just keep peering out the window like literally every five seconds every time I hear a heavy um, like lorry type of vehicle thinking oh it's the delivery um, but no because we live on a construction site I'm just a bit concerned that the it might just go to the development or like drop it off at a random place so uh, fingers crossed it will get here and things can get started um, but it's only a, a two day job so even starting today will just give us a head start so Fingers crossed. Once we get the patio done, then we'll start the furniture. I'm hoping to DIY the furniture. I don't want to um, buy it because I've got a specific vision of what I want. So this is gonna be a garden transformation documented. Um, and I think it's gonna be nice because it's literally a DIY job. So stick around if you're interested to see what we do with our little space. So the digging has started, we're still missing the skip, but that back space is going to be the base for the shed. The skip has finally arrived after many hours of waiting, but at least we can get the digging started. Progress report. All dug out. Ballast in there. And I found one of the builders' pasta lunch and some metal bit. I'm guessing it's sort of of a car or something. Yeah, that's the shed. This is the patio. So this is the progress at the end of day one. If we don't have the delays with the deliveries, I think this area would also be covered. Um, we realised we needed more than one ton bulk bag of ballast. Hi, Hammy. Um, because our gardens were very wet so the ballast actually started sinking and not dissolving but we just need a lot more for like that tiny area in the back for the shed yeah we need a lot more than we thought we would that's actually a one time bag in there and then some so tomorrow we continue we're gonna go and get two more bags we're gonna get some sand sharp sand and we've got the slabs out the front so yeah it's gonna look really really nice um Currently on the coffee run to get us going and keep us going throughout the day. Lovely. Progress report. We put these Proplex sheets down so we don't have to clean the alleyway, um, which didn't arrive until later yesterday, so we had to jack wash the whole thing. And now any spillages, anything like that, we're just going to pick it up and chuck it out. But yeah, we've had another layer of ballast down it's different as you can see because that's from Travis Perkins and that's from Wix and Wix is 20 pounds cheaper than Travis Perkins so and it's much better apparently it compresses much better so we're just waiting on another delivery of MOT I described this wrong this is MOT and that's ballast the orange stuff but what we found is that the ballast that we got from Travis Perkins is sinking so as you can see it's holding a lot of groundwater and um, the MOT is compressing a lot better and we need less of it. The back end as well, even though we leveled it off last night, um, you can see that it has sunken in the middle. So there's a lot of water in our ground. I mean, it has been raining for a little bit, but because the garden's uneven and we've got clay underneath, it's holding a lot more water than we thought it would. And 
Also, that part of our garden is taller and higher than that part. So when they did the existing patio, um, they leveled it off and then put the turf on. Whereas this side, it doesn't exist, it didn't exist. So, yeah. So now what we have to do, and what we thought of doing, to avoid the water rolling towards the house because it's, it's higher at the top and the house is lower, but also to like not leave like ground above the slabs or make the slabs uneven we were getting a couple edging stones so where you can see where the ground is really high we're putting edging stones up, up until like there and then we'll continue the patio as normal but this is going to be a seating area anyway so i think it will just round it off nicely but it wasn't in the plans we're hoping that it will all be level um, but it's not because this side of the garden is taller than that side of the garden, which is a bit annoying. And we also have to level the back end with the shed. So, yeah, even though you can see how the fence is, like, coming down um, in between, is also very, like, uneven, which we didn't account for. But that's the joys of doing stuff, building DIYs. You're not in it. I want to be in it. <laughs> Progress report. Sand is down. Starting to put the slabs in. The annoying thing is that the existing slabs aren't put down correctly, as in like in level. So this one's further up by a centimetre, that's further back. It's not exactly a right angle, so it's creating gaps like this. And it's a bit uneven, but it's not the end of the world. Look here. Hi, you're the site supervisor, are you? <laughs> you managed to buff him now. He's really enjoying that, isn't he? Little massage. Is that level, Hammy? No. progress report the slabs are being cut for the ends and we managed to bring it all the way up to the fence so it's nice and flush and then in there I'm recording from the inside because this is really noisy and really dusty um, and in there in the gaps we're gonna fill it with the purple stones because we've got a tap there so um, it's gonna be a little barbecue cooking area anyway and it's a wet area so <laughs> and the shed space on hold until this area is finished but nearly there. And the patio is done. So is the little space for the shed, but there's water coming through somewhere. Um, so we shall see if it stays the way it is. But yeah, shed foundation done, patio done. The only thing we're missing is the purple decorative stones. Um, that are meant to continue so from there into that little area because we've got a tap and we've got to fill out the fence there with um, a wooden panel but everything else is done we just got to keep sweeping the sand into the little creases look at all the space for activities so shed due next week raised beds on that side and yeah we're just DIYing the furniture soon so garden update, the raised beds are in and there's more to go there but because of the slant and how the garden is, um, this is to be continued. And what will happen is that the raised bed will start from like halfway of that raised bed and it will be just like a step down to yeah, basically work with the slope that's in the garden. Um, yeah so far so good and then we're just trying to kill the um, weed and the grass in those raised beds and then I've got a couple pallets to do some DIY furniture with I've looked on some ideas on Pinterest but we'll see what I can make with these so the garden project continues with some pallet furniture that's gonna be a stool hopefully in the end 
Um, I've just been chopping up one of these small pallets, which is practically the half size of a big one, and just made the legs. That's going to be C. And I'm just about to sand it down and then eventually paint it to, I don't know, probably the same colour as the fence. Um, just keep it natural. So yeah, a bit of woodwork today. Fingers crossed it actually turns out nice. <laughs> Otherwise I just had a bit of fun with some wood. So work in progress. This is the two stools. Um, they're not fixed together yet, so the... Oh, I've got a massive shadow, hold on. So the legs aren't attached because they're so thick. So it splits halfway. Um, I can't actually put nail through it, or at least I don't want to. So I need to run out and get some wood glue and sand it down and then eventually paint it. But these are two stools and then we've got plenty more pallets to work with. And I'm hoping to do two like, almost like love seats. So they're like big. So the whole width of the seat is like this width or something along these lines. So it's much bigger than those two. Um, those are my two little supervisors. No helpers, but they'll keep my company. Progress report. So the stools are completely done. So the only thing they need is painting. They are sanded down. First seat is done-ish. Um, we're just doing the back bits for it, which is that um, palette. And then that's the frame for the other seat. So we'll have two seats, two stools, and that's all the seating done. Fairy lights up. So it's all starting to take shape and it's going to be the same colour as the flower bed. So we've gone for a dark oak colour. Um, and yeah, so far so good. So far everything holds. We've tested the seat. Um, both of us sat in it at the same time. So it held. It wasn't moving. It wasn't creaking. So all solid. Um so yeah, the last thing we've got to do is table, but we haven't actually figured out how we're going to make that just yet. So, but at least we've got seats. That's the main priority. And we can make makeshift tables out of anything. So all good. We can seat four people so far. The other two will eventually be my swinging bench. But that's like further in the future that I'm hoping to DIY. Because I think that would be quite nice to make it your own rather than just buy it from the shop. So, yeah, that's the progress so far. I'm inside because it's freezing right now and I haven't got anything else to do. So, yeah. So, it's done. And I can't believe it. It actually looks really, really good. Well, I think anyway. Um, super sturdy. We have tested it. Like I said, both of us sat on both of these seats. Um yeah all there is left to do is paint them they've all been sanded down and table is going to be a later project and then like i said i've really wanted to or i still do i um, really want to make like a swinging bench in this area so table swinging bench job done but for what we need it and whilst the weather is starting to get nice this will be plenty to have people around in the garden and to get the festivities started so it's all done and painted. All it's missing is the cushions, but that will be another project. And then the only thing we're missing is the table and then my swinging bench, finishing off the flower beds, but it's all coming together. And I love the design. Thank you for watching part one. I hope you found it helpful, or inspirational to see the first part of our garden transformation. Next part, we will be putting the shed in and finishing off the raised beds and fingers crossed getting a start on the front garden. With the raised beds, um, what we want to plant in there is still up in the air. I definitely want to put in bee friendly plants and some things that we can grow ourselves. So a bit of, I don't know, fruit and veg, maybe like strawberries or something. Um, I think it'd be nice to try and grow something of our own um, that we can actually consume rather than just having um, flowers that bloom and then die so I think something we can have all year round that you know 
makes the garden feel a bit more alive and it supports the wildlife I think that'd be really really nice um but that's to be decided we still have a trip to make to the garden center so yeah there's a lot of work to be done with there I think after the raised beds and the front garden once they're all done I think the next priority will be the table to finish off the garden furniture set I have a specific design in my mind for the table which keeps changing um with the more research that I do so that's to be determined and see you know how much work it needs um at the moment the weather is all up in the air one day it's summer the next day it's winter so in my mind it's not that much of a priority because we're not due to eat outside anytime soon um because of the current restrictions in the UK we are allowed to have six people outside or like six of us are allowed to be outside in the garden so at least we can host them and we have somewhere for them to all sit so in my mind you know that that was the priority so in part two we will be doing the shed the raised beds and fingers crossed starting on the front garden because it's april um it is the prime time to plant things to you know do do a bit of gardening ready for the summer season i'm not a gardener so i'm all just getting into this but anytime i spoke to someone i said yeah you need to sow your seeds and plant things um around mid april depending on what, what you want to plant so yeah the next next couple of weeks will be filled with gardening given that the weather eases up and it's not snowing which is really really strange because that's obviously not good for the plants either um but stick around if you want to see that um the shed was super easy to build um we haven't i haven't inserted that clip in here just yet because it would have been way too long and then the finish with the raised beds wouldn't have made any sense so um that will be all in part two um but i hope you enjoyed part one um and yeah stick around if you want to see some more i mean it's not very um frequent i know but um it takes a lot of time to to get things done around the house especially um i've had a week off this time with all the changes that you've seen i've had a week off so um i had a lot of time to to get on with things whereas usually we would be doing things after work or on a weekend so it does take some time to you know get there but we will get there and i think at the end when we step back and look, in, look at the garden i think it's going to be a really enjoyable space i mean it already is i really love um one day when we had a really really hot um day i just literally sat out there and had my morning coffee in my in the in the chair that i made and it was just it's just really nice so finally it's starting to be a functional space in our house um and it's not wasted space anymore so i'm really happy happy about that so stick around if you want to see more and thank you so much for watching this one